Hey y'all, I'm James Wright. Welcome to my shop. And I want to talk about smoothing planes. How tight should you really set them up? Should they have those beautifully small mounds, tiny chip breakers, and really fine settings? Let's find out. Now I have to confess right up front, I love a finely tuned plane that's measured within an inch of itself with this mouth that barely lets light through and chip breakers that are so close to the edge you have to measure them under a microscope. But in all honesty, does that really matter? For 99.99999% of what you do, no. Honestly, it's only about once a year that I have a wood that is so gnarly and twisted that I really have to spend a lot of time to detail one of these down. Most of the time, I'm just going to grab a cabinet scraper or a card scraper and go right through it and not even think about it. So, honestly, you don't need a detailed smoother. You can have one with fairly rough settings, and as long as you have a card scraper or a cabinet scraper, you can do everything else. So, on this Veritas Custom, I can open and close the mouth on here. When I make them really, really fine, I usually have the mouth adjusted to something around there. You can just barely see through it. It's a tiny, tiny amount. It's slightly thicker than the shaving I'm taking. But for general use, for an average every day, my mouth is going to be open up somewhere around there, a sixteenth inch or more. And that sixteenth inch setup is just what I have on my smoothing plane that I'm using for general everyday use. I might set that up also on my jointing plane, but for most of the other ones, I actually have the mouth even larger than that. If you are planing with the grain, you don't need a crazy tight mouth. The tight mouth there is just to hold the fibers down in front of the cut. And if the fibers are already holding themselves down, then you don't need that tight mouth. But what about the chip breaker? Let me take apart my smoother and show you what I've got on here. Pulling that out there, and I've got about a sixteenth of an inch. It's back a good ways from the tip. This is my four and a half, and this is my ultra smoother. Both of them are more than a sixteenth away from the tip. And rarely do I move them any closer. Many of my planes, the chip breaker is even farther back than that, to the point it's no longer even a chip breaker. It's not breaking any chips. And yes, when they're right up close to the edge on difficult grain, they do actually break the chip. And that's why they're called a chip breaker. But most of the time when I'm doing nasty, curly wood, my answer is sharpen the iron. A really good, truly sharp iron will go through this very, very nicely. Now, it won't go through it very deeply. And if you take a shallow cut with a really sharp iron, you can go through 99% of all crazy figured woods. A sharp iron and a shallow cut do really good work. But there are still a few woods where it doesn't. And about once a year, I play with one of those woods that are really fun, where even the sharpest of irons and the shallowest of cuts still leave tear out. And in that case, I'm going to take some time, and I'm going to have some fun. And I'm going to really go at my plane like crazy, and I'm move the frog forward until I get the finest of fine mouth, and I'm going to extend the iron out just the tiniest of amount, and I'm going to push that chip breaker right to the edge. And then I can plane on almost any grain at all. Beautiful, and it's so much fun, but it takes a lot of time and practice and patience and skill to really get all of those settings together. Because when, when you get that, that tiny mouth and the chip breaker right there and everything close, there's no place for the chip to go. And so you have to have everything dialed in beautifully, and it takes a lot to do that. Or you could grab a stupid cabinet scraper that cost you 30 bucks brand new and scrape it and be done. Yeah, it does it just fine. So when I see that really difficult, crazy grain, I get a smile that makes me want to think about putting together the beautiful smoother and really doing the time to dial it in and make everything so nice. And then I realize, wait a second, I ain't got no time for that. I'm just going to grab this or my card scraper and go to town on it. And really, for most people, that's the answer. But I do have to say, having a smoother that you really put a lot of time and effort into and you make it just perfect. And when you set it down, you can just pull it with a string and it cuts itself on the most difficult wood and makes these gorgeous gossamer shavings that float upwards rather than downward. <gasps> it's so pleasing to the soul, but it really isn't very practical. So do you need those tight shavings? No. Most of the time for every plane in the shop, a mouth that's about a sixteenth of an inch open, a chip breaker that's about a sixteenth of an inch away from it, a good sharp iron, and you're good for almost anything you can touch. Remember, it really comes down to how sharp is your iron and how deep are your cutting, and you can do most of the woods with that. Yeah, there's a few you can't, but for the rest, there's card scrapers and cabinet scrapers that'll clean it up really nicely. Now, you notice I didn't actually go through and show any of this. I have a whole bunch of videos on that, and I actually have a couple videos showing how to set up an amazingly fine smoother so it can do those crazy things. I'll leave links to those down below, because if you want to know how to do that, there's whole videos on that topic. And also, I'm going to be soon doing a project with Jeff from Reed Plains. Uh, we've been working on it for the last few years to actually go in and study and do the tests to find out 
what do each of these aspects do? How close to the chip breaker? What angle of the iron? How deep of a cut? How close of the mouth? And what mixture of all of those go into making beautiful shavings on difficult wood? I don't know. Let's actually find out and do some scientific testing on that. But until then, just relax. Have some fun in your shop and realize you don't need all those settings for most of anything you do. It's amazing what you can get with a good card scraper. So have a little bit of fun and then go out in the shop and, and don't worry about it. As long as it's taking shavings and doing what you want, then that's all it takes. And if you are having problems, sharpen the iron. 90% of the questions I get, that's the answer. It's just not sharp enough. So have some fun. And if you do have any other questions, throw them in the comments down below. I do read through them and answer as many of them as I can get to, and that helps out the channel. Thank you. Just like, hitting, comment, like, share, subscribe. You've heard it a hundred times, but really it helps. Thank you. And there are a whole bunch of people in this audience that just put comment down below, down below. And I really love that. So if you want to join the group that puts comment down below, down below, I should make a t-shirt with that. But if you want to go even farther, there's some names dancing over here. Those are the fantastic, wonderful, benevolent, and gorgeous people over on Patreon. Because without patrons, we wouldn't be here. You guys, you are the ones who sponsor this channel. I don't get to talk about some razor or mattresses because you guys are here. Thank you for that. I love not talking about those things. And if you like that, then think about becoming a patron. You know how to do that. Links down below, description, all that. I think I'll do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. Beautiful gossamer shavings that go up rather than down.